I'm going to tell him, Pastor David, so he could correct me. Um, but he called me Friday to ask me if I would preach today. <laughs> and then he goes to rattle off all the people that aren't going to be here or who couldn't speak. And I said, <laughs> I'll do it, Pastor David. I'm just kidding, Pastor David. Just kidding. Uh, that's right. Yeah. So y'all know that uh, Pastor David and Miss Joe potentially got exposed to COVID-19, so they're being safe and not coming today. So um, we pray for them, just like um, all the others that are in our family that are taking precautions. So the kids do get to go over there, y'all. There you go. All right. Did y'all see the memes on Facebook that said, I think my neighbor spent $23,000 on fireworks? Um, we were those neighbors last night. We were, we were at the merchant's house, and we had a, a big shindig and um, getting to celebrate America and our freedom and shooting a lot of fireworks to, to do that. Um, such a fun weekend. I love when 4th of July falls on the weekend because you get to make, like, because it's worthy of several days of just having a good time of celebrating where we're from. So um, I'm going to pray, and then we'll get started. Jesus, we love you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the, the things that you said when you walked the face of the earth and the things that you say to our hearts today. God, I pray that we hear you and we, um, we do as you, as you tell us. As my friend Matt always reminds me, it's just a conversation among friends, and so we just thank you that you speak to us conversate with us as friends in Jesus name amen so not to be uh, like a cliche uh, but I did want to preach or speak on freedom today because um, uh, and I've already I got to preach this morning at Yogi on the lake and so they uh, usually growing up this is what happens which I'm glad you didn't disappoint at our churches, we, we sing some good American songs, and usually there's a sermon about freedom somewhere along the way. So I was glad that my kids got to experience my childhood right here today um, singing um, our, our American songs here in church. Uh, I did kind of think, I wonder what this would be like if we were a multicultural church in a way that like we were an international church, and only about half of us were in here were Americans, and they had to sing, you know, we're proud to be an American. Um, but uh, but we're not that, so here we are, all great Americans. Um, anyway, I always question what we do to see if it lines up with um, our tradition or, or Jesus. I did find some scripture, though, that said something about Jesus, so I'm going to talk about that today. And it's in Galatians chapter 5. And... When Pastor David asked me what I was going to preach on, because Miss Joe needed a title, not because he didn't trust me, it was because I needed he needed a title. Um, I said um, first, I said free at last, but then I got to uh, contemplating this a little more, and I had a picture in my mind, and I saw my arms crossed like this, bound by leather that had the word love on it, and so I. That's what my message is about, freedom that's bound by love. Freedom that's bound by love. I know that we, when we think of freedom, we think of no restraints. Nothing that binds or holds us back, or holds us. That's freedom, according to the dictionary. But we often find that that type of freedom really comes um, on the heels of anarchy, or chaos. You get to do whatever you want to do. I get to do whatever I want to do. We get to do everything that we want to do. Oftentimes, ends up in pretty chaotic. So we, whether we admit it or not, we know that our freedoms have parameters. And I'm going to, because we're talking about Jesus today, so the freedom that I'm going to be talking about is the freedom that's in the kingdom of God, the freedom that comes through Christ. And that kind of freedom has parameters and those parameters are love. Anything outside of, just like here as an American, our currency, we 
U.S. dollar, right? That's, that's our currency. That's what makes the, this economy work. Pastor David's good about talking about the currency of the kingdom, which is what? Mercy. Mercy. That's the currency of the kingdom. And I would say the currency of freedom is love. And I'm going to prove it to you in the scripture. So Galatians 5.1 says, It was for freedom that Christ set us free. Therefore, keep standing firm and do not be subject again to the bondage of our past or of your past. Now I'm going to be reading out of the Passion Translation. So if you're like, where did all those words come from? I'm going to be in the Passion Translation because I like what it does when I go over to verse 13. Um, I was a really good Baptist preacher this morning when I was writing notes. Um, freedom always has a, Scott Walters would be so proud of me, a price, a purpose, a promise, and a parameter. And I figured since we're, since COVID, everything is PPP, I figured to stick in that. And so you could remember this. Freedom always has a price, a purpose, a promise, and parameters. So Jesus says, in, or Paul says, in reference to Christ in verse 1, it says it was for freedom that Christ set us free. Just here on this, in America, we just got through um, celebrating it in song. Uh, there was a price that was paid for our freedom. There's a price that's paid daily for us to remain free. Just like that in the kingdom, or the freedom that we've been granted through Christ, he paid the price, and you all know it was an ultimate price. It's the only way that we get to be free is through Jesus. And it was said and reiterated here, and it was for freedom that Christ set us free. For no other reason he set us free but for freedom. And there's a reason that freedom is that important. Yeah, there's, uh, I find it so ironic. Today is this, um, I think it's today or tomorrow, somewhere in Madison, the Socialistic Party um, for Socialism and Liberation. They're having a, like, I was like, that don't even go together. Um, but, but just like, just like um, in the kingdom, uh, there's always a counterfeit. There's a counterfeit that says this is free. You're free. There's a freedom. Um, but it's not. I mean, especially with, with socialism, that's, uh, that's almost the opposite of, of freedom. It's somebody telling you uh, what to do for control. Jesus tells us something to do for freedom. It's for freedom. It's always for freedom that he tells us. Um, so the scripture, let's look into this uh, Gen uh, Galatians 5, verse 13. Beloved ones, God has called us to live a life of freedom in the Holy Spirit. But don't view this wonderful freedom as an opportunity to set up a base operations in the natural realm. Freedom means that we become so completely free of self-indulgence that we become servants of one another, expressing love in all that we do. Oh, good. Is that the passion? Oh, good. Moving on up. All right, so verse 14 says... For love completes the laws of God. Wow, that is such a huge statement. All of the law can be summed in one grand statement. Demonstrate love to your neighbor, even as you care for and love yourself. It all can be summed up right here. Demonstrate love to your neighbor. But if you continue to criticize and come against each other over minor issues, you're acting like wild beasts trying to destroy one another. Your Bible says biting and devouring. As the Holy Spirit, our victory says, as you yield freely and fully to the dynamic life and power of the Holy Spirit, you will abandon the cravings of your self-life. For your self-life craves the things that offend the Holy Spirit and hinder him from living free within you. And the Holy Spirit's intense cravings hinder your old self from dominating you. So then, the two incompatible and conflicting forces within you 
are your self-life of the flesh and the new creation life of the Spirit. But when you are brought into full freedom of the Spirit of grace, you will no longer be living under the domination of the law, but soaring above it. The cravings of the self-life are obvious. Sexual immorality, lustful thoughts, pornography, chasing after things instead of God, manipulating others, hatred of those who get in your way, senseless arguments, resentment when others are favored, temper tantrums, angry quarrels, only thinking of yourself, being in love with your own opinions. That's a lot of that's on social media. Uh, being envious of the blessings of others, murder, uncontrolled addictions, wild parties, and all other similar behavior. Haven't I warned you that those who use their freedom for these things will not inherit the kingdom realm of God? But the fruit produced by the Holy Spirit within you is divine love in all its varied expressions. And I know your Bible says love, joy, but the way the translation, the uh, Passion Translation puts it, it says within you this divine love is expressed the following ways. Joy that overflows. Peace that subdues. Patience that endures. Kindness in action, a life full of virtue, faith that prevails, gentleness of heart, and strength of spirit. Never set the law above these qualities, for they are meant to be limitless. You know how often, and that's what this whole argument that Paul is making with the church at Galatians, that why would you go back to the law? after grace has been given why would you settle for something so clear cut when you when it doesn't even satisfy the law your obedience to the law doesn't even satisfy the law so why would you go back to that it's easy to check off those things that you're doing that you're accomplishing but here's these things that he says that are actually limitless. When, when it tells you that, here's a law, don't lie. Well, you can check that off, and you can become an honest person, and you're not lying. But when you, when you take something like kindness in action, like it's limitless. When, when you don't lie, it stops at the point when you don't lie. But your kindness is limitless. A law that says, um, don't commit adultery. You can put an exclamation mark, or a, it's a thing that you accomplish. But what it tells you that patience that endures, like that's limitless. Like that goes on and on and on. Do you see what I'm saying? See, the law has such limits, even though if you could accomplish them, which you couldn't, but it had limits. But these things that you get in this freedom in the Holy Spirit, you, in living in love, these things expressed out are, are like, man, you see, oh, you can kind of get a glimpse of, oh, this is the good stuff, or this is the big stuff, or this is the important stuff. So... I said, freedom always has a counterfeit. I remember a time that I thought I was free. And like Matt and I had discussed before, then you find out something happens, and then you find out there's freedom that you didn't even know existed. And I think that we live in a time today that given the opportunity, we can experience some things that we've never experienced before in God, even in this, like in, especially in this season of so much conflict and chaos because we can live these things that are limitless through love and the Holy Spirit like this is the freedom that we've been invited into not just the freedom that we have as Americans that we can check off the list that says 
hey, I get to vote, I have a vote. Okay, well, that is, that is, there's a limit, okay. Or I get to go to the college of my choice, or I get to have a job, or I get to marry who I want to, or I get to live where I want to, or I get to do these things that I want to. Those have limits. And we'll celebrate and shout from the rooftops about our freedoms in America, and I'm shouting with you, but they have limits. I'm inviting you to peer over to this freedom that comes in Christ through love expressed out in limitless ways when we get to love those who are hard to love. That's limitless. So, like, if you could see a physical binding around my hands of love, and every time I choose to love more, I keep getting bound and bound and bound and bound more. Every choice to love. Every choice to love. It would appear to the world that I don't look very free. To the naked eye, it looks like I'm not very free. Let me, let me give you an example. You, you're married and you're in covenant relationship. But man, you just want to be free to, to you want to be happy. You just, want to, you just want to do your own thing. It's just hard being married. Just hard. You'd like to be free. Do your own thing, sow your wild oats. So in the world, you unravel some of this binding. Your counterfeit freedom it looks like now you get to be free. But then you find yourself bound to something else on the other side. It's the same thing when you uh, have kids that are tough to love. If you bind one more time in love, I'll my door's always open. We may not agree on anything whatsoever, but I love you. You're always welcome here. Looks like you're a doormat. It looks like you're not standing your ground. All the things that the world makes it look like that you can put a check off of, but you're doing something pretty limitless because your freedom, this grace, is not dependent on just your actions. This, this free flow of love, this free flow of the kingdom, this realm that we're talking about, this is, this is where the Holy Spirit has full dominion and reign. And to limit him, well, that's just ignorant. Because he, has, he will use all of these things to bring about his kingdom. He will use all of these things, all these fruits that come out of love will come from him because they're, whose, whose gifts are they anyway, right? They're his. I couldn't make this stuff up. You know, I know I th you all hear me talk about it all the time about slaves who were circumstantially in bondage. And they were free. They were more free. You can hear it in their spirituals about they had peered over and saw the the promise in God that limitless promise that I will be free and they had joy in their hearts now some they escaped slavery found themselves free men but bound with bitterness and hatred which is worse Things that are eternal or things that are momentary, mom, momentarily, moment, something, moments. <laughs> that, yeah, momentary. Monetary? And that's money. Um, just in a moment of time. Do you see what I'm saying, though? So I can choose to love. I, I was talking to a young man who was. Um, discussing about um, being happy. He's married, and he's like, he just wants to be happy. 
And, uh, but he doesn't want to, he, ha, he, has a, he has a kid, but he didn't want to lose a lifetime of separation with his kid just by stepping off and having an affair for the short term. Like he, could, he was able to see if I, if I go down this road, he wouldn't get to see his kid. Um, like I said, he would find himself maybe free in the moment of time, but bound for a generation. Or, and we see it with people who, like, I just want to be free from all this weight. And so they go on all this, this diet, and they find themselves still a slave to poor self-image, which had nothing to do with the outer appearance. We do it all the time. The funny thing about it, not really funny, it's ironic, but when you do the hard thing, because you're a good Christian, so you try to do the hard thing, you, you say, yes, Lord, you, you say, yes, Lord, but then what you find yourself doing is, since you've said yes to the hard stuff, you find yourself like, for me, I will uh, eat my emotions. I'm like, well, the rest of this sucks, so I'm just going to eat a burger today. Or I'm going to really just, this is, I'm going to eat a lot of cake. And I'm probably going to do it again tomorrow, too. Or I'm probably going to have more drinks than I should. Or whatever it is. But you find yourself being a good Christian and doing the hard thing, but then you, you free, but then you find yourself in bondage to the thing trying to relieve you of you trying to be free and doing the thing God called you to. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying. There is always a conflict with freedom. Just as we as Americans fight for our freedom daily, us in the kingdom of God have to fight for our freedom daily. Because there is always something there to bind you. Let's look at our society right now. The thing that is trying to bind us the most is hate. Fear. You all saw the videos, and I accidentally watched this video in front of my kids, or the guy with the dreams, and like everything's coming crashing down in November. Did y'all see this? Um, and um, I'm like, oh, snap, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to, I knew this was coming, you know, and it's, you're just like, oh, what am I going to do, <laughs> you know? Um, and then if, you have, if you've listened to those guy, that guy's dreams, I think he was, I think he means well, but Dutch Sheets did come out with a, an explanation of that, and I'd encourage you to, to listen to that. If y'all don't know anything I'm talking about, it's fine. But if you do, um, because I will, I will, I will err on the side of hope every time because I know who Jesus is. Just like we sang our American way, you know, if, if it's just me and my wife and kids and I got to start over, you know, I'm thankful to be in this land. But let me say something even better that's limitless. Like, because of Jesus, if it all gets blown away, I still have Jesus. To, to live is Christ, to die is gain, right? Like, it's hard for us to even get to that place. We like to say it, like I said before, we like to say, as far as me and my house, we will serve the Lord. But when that serving looks like something, I mean, it, it can get hard. But I will say that we have something so much more exciting to be proud of right here that, yes, they, things may, I mean, we're, there's some chaotic times, and some people in some big cities have more, more struggle than we are here in, in rural South. But they are, their promise is just like ours, or ours is just like theirs. It, Jesus never leaves us. He never forsakes us. He has a destiny not just for this country, but he has a destiny for each of us. And the way those destinies get fulfilled is we walk in the parameters that he set forth. And this one in the kingdom is the parameters of love. That is the place we are, are most free when we choose to love. Love our neighbor as ourselves. Love summarized in one grand statement. Love your neighbor as yourself.
I mean, wow, that it's all summed up right there. So Jesus says, you know, where the Son, this, who the Son has set free is free indeed. The Passion Translation says, now that you're a son, because you're a son, live the most free life that you can, because you, you are a son. And that's where, as um, my last P point would be, is there is a promise. We are heirs. It's not like we choose to do these things independently on our own. We're doing this as a part of a kingdom, as part of a family. We choose to love. We choose to um, have joy. We choose to have kindness. We choose to have faith. We choose to do all these things together, not independent of one another. think about the people that oh, so I was uh, preaching this morning but I, it's, I was at um, Yogi like I said and there were some families there one family had six kids and another family had four kids and one of them was um, obviously a, a child from another nation and, um, and y'all know our story we, we were asked by the Lord to adopt the little kids the twins and um, and y'all know that it's not easy. Y'all know our story. Not a day goes by, is it easy? Not one moment. Um, it was so the kids didn't have uh, daycare on Friday because of a holiday. Um, and Nathan says, "Ah, oh, we're gonna have to listen to y'all getting onto the twins all weekend." And um, I was like, "And we're gonna have to be getting over the twins all weekend." Because they, again, um, they are, their brains are continually being renewed in the name of Jesus. And um, uh, so um, when I say this story about like the Underground Railroad where people literally gave their lives for others' freedom, they risked it all so that somebody could be free in the Underground Railroad. So many stories. Um, I feel like the, the story of the Good Samaritan, and you know I, I have an affection for Martin Luther King Jr. and his, and his uh, teachings and speeches, and he talks about the, the, the story of the Good Samaritan. And the one who stopped didn't say, what's going to happen to me if, if I stop and help this person? The question is, if I don't stop, what's going to happen to this person? It's the gospel summed up in one sentence, one question. Jesus, if I don't set them free, who will set them free? And it's the same thing when Lindsay and I answer the call to adoption. If, if we don't do this, you know, what's the part, the self-man, the self-indulgent man, the one who struggles with my personal freedoms, asks the question, what's going to happen to my life if I do this? But the one who steps into the limitless freedom that comes through Jesus and says, if I don't do this, what's going to happen to these kids? And we have to remind ourselves of that all the time. But where we are in the quest of our freedoms that we're so proud of, let us be even more so after the freedoms that are limitless, the ones that tell us to love our neighbor as ourself, the one that doesn't look like us or believe like us or smell like us or think like us. And have the world say, man, look at him loving that person. It looks like he doesn't, man, I would never do it. It looks like he's all bound up. Well, I mean, he's, he's done got a hold of, he's into something. He's, he shouldn't love like that. I mean, they're not worthy of that. But what has happened is what you see here 
is really a freer man than ever because my trust is not in myself. My trust is not what I see. My trust is in this limit, limitless promise that as a son, the Lord says, I can love him with all of my heart, soul, and mind, and I can love my neighbor as myself. And that Jesus says, that's, that sums it every bit up. It was for this freedom he set me free. It was for this freedom. It was not so that I could do a checklist and say, I, I do this, I don't, I don't drink that much, I don't, I, I don't cheat on my wife, I, I love my kids. No, it is these things that call us beyond ourselves that say, if, if I don't do this right here, right now, if I don't do this, what is going to happen? I was talking to my friend Ryan last night, and we're, it's, it's just like with abortion. The, um, like if we don't stand up for the unborn, like if we don't do it, if we, don't, if we just get weary in trying and just like the law, the courts, nothing's ever going to turn. If we ever just get weary, like what would happen if we just, well, that's just, it's just not worth it. If we ever come to that conclusion, when are we willing to give up our, our very life so that they may live. We can, as, as believers, we can never come to the place, and I use that one because that's, that can all get us in our goody spot. Like, yeah, we're, we are, I mean, we're, we're going to fight for the most vulnerable among us. But then we take it to a place where it may be a little more risky, and we fight for people who, they come with a lot of baggage. We're going to say, you know what? And you, if you can get a good view of like the passion of the Christ and Jesus was bound and he was getting beaten, this is that kind of love. This is what that bound I'm talking about. This is the thing that will hold you there. When it feels like some, if you're just getting beat down. This is the love that will keep you in the fight. This is the love that's limitless. This is the love that says yes day after day after day and says no to the self-indulgent freedom that you think you're after. It says I'll, I'll hunker down even more here. I'm going deeper. I'm going deeper because there's a promise that if I love, that the entire gospel of Jesus Christ is summed up in it. I don't know anything else we can do that's that big. So I ask you guys this. Um, what is it that the Lord may be asking you to ask the question if I don't do this thing if I don't love this person if I don't what's going to happen to them because again you can put the neighbor in a box and say which one's your neighbor and it's not I'm not going to do that but I know this, these things that come within Holy Spirit, not that I just need them, but my family needs them. They need to, say, they need to see joy that overflows. They need to see peace that subdues patience that endures and not only stopping there but the people at my work need to see that and the people that are watching me on social media need to see that and when it's all stripped away and I've lost everything I need to be sitting by myself and I need to see that when it all comes down to it 
I love you, Lord, with all of my heart, soul, and mind. And I love others. I'll close with this story. So there's a young lady I met in Lebanon. And I don't know if you know this going on in Lebanon right now. That's where my family's from. 80%, their dollar, their currency. Yeah, I'm closing. Their currency has gone down 80% since October. This is a nation of two million people that took on one and a half more million Syrian refugees in the last few years. And mainly the church has loved on these refugees, has given everything they've gotten. But they have a very corrupt government that's just stolen from the people. The people were used to, they've always been able to put US dollar in the bank. Don't necessarily have to use the currency of the country. Well, so now when they go to get their money, they can't get the US dollar because you know it holds its value. The government has stolen the US dollar and it's giving them back Lebanese currency, which is at 80% the value. So now everybody's on the same field. Everybody's poor. Everybody's struggling. And this young lady, when I was there two years ago, super vibrant, just, I mean, a fireball. Got the call of God on her life, passionate about reaching people for the gospel, all these things. She just graduated from college. She's been applying, applying, applying. And she said she struggles with her self-worth because all of this time, she's, her value has been on based off of what she's going to be able to give, like, like her job, all, you know, kind of a lot of like our men, American mentality. She's at a place where they, I mean, they're, their food's rationed. I mean, we're talking about less than a year ago. I mean, they were moving and shaking. And here they are at the bare bottom, wondering what they're going to do next, where the next meal is coming from. And literally, they, 80% of the food that comes into Lebanon is imported. Imports are down 50% because there's nobody to buy the product. But there's people there to, that needs it. But they, they don't have the money. The currency has no value. So nobody's shipping food because they're not going to do that for free. And the government's super corrupt. But that doesn't matter because all that it comes down to, here comes one of our sisters in Christ is sitting in her yard questioning her worth. And she felt the Holy Spirit say to her, do you love me with all of your heart, soul, and mind? And do you love your neighbor? And she was able to say yes to that. And at that point, she felt like she was the wealthiest, like she got it. Like when it all comes down to, if you got put in a concentration camp, if you, no matter what it was, if you could, at the if moment, you could say, God, I love you with everything I have. And I love this person and this enemy and I love this person. That it doesn't matter what's happening. You have just stepped into the limitless realm of God and you will change not just the physical but you will change what you can't see for generations by choosing to love the way God said. Not the self-indulgent love, but this agape love. So, Father, we, we ask the question, show us right now where we say, God, if I don't do this, if I don't bind myself in love here, what will happen to this family or this relationship? Not what will happen to me if I do it, but what will happen if I don't? And Holy Spirit, you're the one that empowers us. You're the one who freely gives. It's Christ who has given for freedom. He has made us free. And you come and live in us, Holy Spirit, and you bring the very power to live out this freedom. God, may we feel free today to love more than ever. And may history testify that we said yes. In Jesus' name. Guys, y'all be blessed. If there's anything you need prayer for, 
we'll be down here. Um, we can pray at a distance. Whatever makes you comfortable. When you see scriptures, it sums up a whole gospel in a sentence like, love your neighbor as yourself. That's something that you should fight for the rest of your days. Bless you guys.